Hi, in this video I'm going to give a brief overview of how the block creation flow works in Ethereum and I will show you exactly where in the code base of Ethereum uh, it is actually executed. So to give a brief overview, since the merge, Ethereum right now has something called execution layer and a consensus layer. So these two work together to make Ethereum run. So how exactly these two work? This is from ethereum.org website and it mentions like how exactly they communicate with each other and what exactly they do. So here you can see both consensus and execution clients run in parallel. They need to be connected so that the consensus client can provide instructions to the execution client and the execution client can pass bundles of transactions to the consensus client to include in beacon blocks. So consensus client it actually orchestrates the whole thing and the execution client that does the verification and execution logic. So here is a summary of the control flow. When the consensus client is not a block producer, so then what happens is that consensus client receives a block via the Gossy protocol uh, and this is through the P2P of consensus. Then it does the pre-validation logic and then it sends the transactions to the execution layer and the execution layer executes the transactions and validates the state in the block header so that you can execute the transactions and check if the hashes match. And after that, you will be sure that the block which is produced, uh, that is a valid block. And then execution layer passes the validation data to consensus layer so that now every check has been done and now the consensus layer can add the block to its head in its own blockchain. And what happens when consensus client itself is a block producer? Okay, so you can just validate or you can actually create block and then propagate across the network and all the other network participants will do the validation process. So when the consensus client is actually the block producer, then this is the flow of the things that happens. So the client, the consensus client receives the notice that it is the next block producer. Then it calls the create block method in the execution client. So this I'm going to show where exactly it happens in the code base. So this creation of block. Okay. So what happens after that is that execution layer accesses the transaction mempool. So it has all the transaction data it it accesses that and then it bundles the transactions into a block executes the transaction and generates a block hash and then the consensus client uh, gets those and adds and adds to it uh, in its local blockchain as a beacon block and then it brought broadcasts the block over the gossip protocol okay and the other clients when they receive they follow the same procedure which was described here Okay, so now I'm going to just show briefly where exactly in the code base of consensus client and execution client this block creation happens. I won't go into much more details, but I'll just show the functions and the flow of logics, just which should be just enough so that you can dive deeper into the code base. So I'm here in this case, the consensus client I'm going to use is the Prism consensus client and the execution client is going to be the Go Ethereum execution client. Okay, so here I'm in the Prism repository and here we have a file called proposer.go. Okay, so here you can see so the proposer.go is inside this uh, beacon chain folder of Prism consensus client and this has this function called get beacon block. Okay. So here you can see get beacon block is called by a proposer during its assigned slot to request a block to sign by passing in the slot. So this starts the logic of creating a block and as described before it needs the data from the execution layer to actually build a block right. So that logic happens around here right so it says get local or builder payloads so here we have this get local payload function so we are assuming that the consensus client or whoever is running this software 
uh, to participate in the network they have their own setup to build blocks they are not relying on any other builder to build blocks okay so here is this get a get local payload function and here you can see in the description this returns the execution payload of a given slot the function has full awareness of pre and post merge so merge means uh, after that uh, ethereum uh, became the uh, proof of stake rather than proof of work blockchain so here uh, this does a call to the execution layer to get the payload so that call happens around here yeah so the payload is equal to uh, this execution engine caller dot get payload okay so here this is the uh, interface definition of this get payload function so this engine caller interface that defines a client that can interact with an ethereum execution nodes engine service via json rpc so here there is this json rpc call to the execution layer and that gives back the payload and now and now i'm going to show you this corresponding function in the execution layer which is the go ethereum code base so this get payload v2 in go ethereum code base which exists in this in this path so it slash catalyst slash api dot go so here there is this consensus api uh, struct which exposes this endpoint so get payload v2 uh, there is this get payload v1 v2 and in future versions there will be v3 so this is called by this consensus layer and then this internally calls this uh, get payload function to get the execution payload envelope okay so i'm not going to go into the details of what exactly it does but i'll just show you what kind of data it uh, retrieves so this is the kind of data it receives so it retrieves so it's the block value which is of type big int and then execution payload which is of type executable data and this executable data has is the data necessary to execute an execution layer payload okay so this has all the information so the obvious ones are these transactions right and then the parent hash uh, the state root uh, the gas limit gas use time stamp uh, base fee per gas a uh, block hash itself so all this data is calculated and sent back from execution layer to the consensus layer so from go ethereum back to uh, prism in this case and here that we have this payload and this payload is utilized here uh, as local payload and that and this local payload uh, is is called inside this set execution data inside this set execution data which essentially sets the execution data for the block okay and as you can see execution data can come from local execution layer client or remote builder and once the block has its data set then uh, the block and then this block is uh, sent back as of data type generic beacon block okay so this is a very brief overview of the uh, flow of execution of how a block is created and then later on this same block will be broadcasted across the network for other network participants to do the verification and then eventually adding them to their own local blockchain and this is how the blockchain grows